mean the deputy minister? And um, I, I didn't see the minister here. If he's in the meeting, uh, honorable minister, you are welcome. Uh, but I saw the deputy minister. Uh, colleagues, um, it's 10 o'clock. We are going to start our meeting uh, today, where are we going to get the briefing from the department? But before I so say, I say this, let me recording in progress. Everybody in this meeting, he is or she or he is welcome to our meeting. I will start with the agenda of today. Amanda, can you give us the agenda before I can proceed saying anything? Amanda? I will upload it shortly. <laughs> can you mute? Can you mute your mic, madam? Okay. Uh, it seems uh, who... Okay. Hey, here is the agenda, the briefing by the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy on the uh, APPN budget vote number 34. The second one is a consideration and adoption of the minutes and budget vote reports. Okay, it means we have only two items. Honorable members, <coughs> no, no shading. Here is the agenda in front of you. Um, anyone who moves uh, for the uh, adoption of the agenda? BP uh, moves, Chairperson. Honorable BP moves. Any second? Okay. I'll second you, Honorable Bibi. Don't want to waste time because now it's load shading. Um, uh, but, okay. There's no, uh, in this item, it's only two items. I didn't see any items called uh, the apology, but let me start uh, getting the apologies. I received an apology for Honorable Nzube. He will, he will join us later. He is in the flight to come to Cape Town. Any apology? Yeah, Chairperson BB here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if it happens, maybe by one o'clock we are not finished. Can I be excused? I've got an ad hoc committee at one. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Any apology from our side? Uh, thanks, Chair. Ngwenya. Uh, Chairperson, oh. I'm, I'm, yes, I'm also Chairperson one o'clock having a presiding officer meeting. If happened, uh, we're not yet uh, done, I'll be leaving. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Mama. Any... Apologies uh, from your, uh, do you have any apology, Amanda? None. Let me give to the- Sorry, Chair. Yes, Mama. Oh, yes, Amanda. Apology. We have only Hello? Okay. Hello, Chair. Yes, ma. Honorable Nsube will be joining the meeting late. Yes, now we uh, noted the apology for Honorable Nsube. 
and Mam Bibi and Mangwenya at one o'clock, they will leave the meeting. It means we have to make sure that before one o'clock we are done in this meeting. And then let me give to the department to check whether from them, um, minister or deputy minister, do you have any apology? No, thank you so much, a chairperson of the select committee. Greetings to the members of the portfolio committee. Um, I just want to turn an apology on behalf of uh, Minister Guedemandasha is going to join. Uh, he's having uh, some technical glitches, but he's going to join the meeting as soon as that is sorted. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Minister, Dr. Dr. Deputy Minister, uh, I am not going to waste any time. Let me give to you in the meantime, uh, you do your overall, uh, I mean, uh, political overview, and then you give to your, the, your, the department to, to present the uh, APP, uh, Deputy Minister. Thank you so much, a, a chairperson, and greetings again to the members of the select committee. Um, thank you so much uh, for giving us an opportunity to come and present uh, the annual performance plan for 2023-24 and budget vote uh, to the portfolio committee. Um, we actually um, appreciated this exercise because from time to time, it empowers us as the department and, and whatever criticism that you then bring to us, uh, maybe if you identify some gaps, we also welcome that because it makes us to improve where you feel we are not doing enough. I'm going then to hand over to the DG to, hand, to present um, the report to the select committee. Over to you, DG. Thank you. Um... Deputy Minister, um, Honorable Chairperson, um, Honorable Members. Um, so Honorable Minister was here earlier. Um, Honorable DM, um, TM, DM, DMRE, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Chairperson, um, the presentation um, is mainly in three sections. Um, um, I will run through uh, some sector highlights or sector context. Um, share with the members uh, some of the key performance highlights from the previous financial year. Um, the priorities of the department as agreed uh, between the minister and the president for this current financial year. Um, high level um, presentation on annual performance targets that we've set for ourselves. And then um, the budget allocation. Um, I will run through part one to four. And then I will hand over to the CFO to take the meeting through the budget allocation. Next slide. Chairperson and members. Um, just... Chairperson and members, um, in terms of the sector context, um, as the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy, we are responsible for both the minerals and the energy sector. And um, on the mineral side of the mining, um, what we have observed or what is the current trending is that uh, the sector is um, uh, currently driven by strong commodity prices. Um, and um, South Africa mineral production um, uh, in the year 2022 uh, achieved a fresh record high of um, just over 1.1 uh, trillion. Uh, compared to um, uh, the year uh, 2021. Um, the sector contribution to GDP uh, grew by 4% to almost uh, 194 billion, uh, keeping uh, its percentage contribution uh, um, very similar to that of uh, um, the previous year of the year 2021, um, which was sitting at about 7.5%. Uh, the sector in the last 
year uh, created about uh, uh, 15,000 more jobs and lifting total employment in the sector to about uh, 475,000 uh, jobs. Um, there are obviously concerns that still remain um, in the sector and concerns that remain are more about the constraints in the rail and port uh, logistics, um, the inadequate electricity supply and illegal mining as these uh, constraints uh, obviously impact uh, the sector production. The Mineral Council estimates that the opportunity cost resulting from these constraints, specifically from the rail and port constraints, uh, to have increased to about 50 billion in 2022 from 35 billion uh, uh, in the year before, when um, its uh, delivered tonnages are measured against a uh, targeted tonnage. Of um, concern for the longer term for the sector is the lack of investment um, in the mining sector, which points to constrained growth in the future and declining production um, uh, if this trend is not, is not re uh, reversed. Next slide. On the energy front, um, we are all aware that we are confronted by the declining ESCOM uh, energy availability factor, um, which uh, impacts on security of supply for, for the country. Um, and and DTAF um, um, is a reflection of cumulative uh, impact of uh, historical underinvestment in maintenance and asset uh, management. Uh, but we also understand that uh, this is exacerbated by the quality of the maintenance and the flaws in, in, in the design of uh, mostly the new uh, power station. Um, in December 2022, uh, uh, the EFF fell to about 50% obviously setting off an increased intensity and levels of load shedding since then. I mean, since December, we have almost seen load shedding um, on, a daily, on a daily basis. Um, according to the latest Reserve Bank estimates, load shedding has a negative impact of about 2.1% on quarterly GDP in the third quarter of um, 2022. And the impact during the first quarter of this year is expected to even be more higher as we had experienced more uh, load shedding and, and, and even the intensity has increased compared to um, the third quarter of 2022. There are plans in place to address and improve the situation, and this includes uh, improving the performance of existing power stations and the addition of mitigating capacity as quickly as, as possible. On the oil and gas front, uh, oil and gas exploration investment is uh, dampened um, and mainly due to um, the litigations uh, stemming from our highly litig litigious uh, environment. Um, as, as members may be aware, um, um, if one looks at uh, Namibia um, and the developments that are happening there in the sector, um, there is no reason why South Africa uh, should not be in the same uh, in the same uh, uh, situation. Declining refining capacities in the country is also impacting on liquid fuel supply arrangements. And uh, this therefore needs to take a review of the security of supply arrangements that are currently in place. Next slide. Um, honorable Chairperson, um, in terms of the performance highlights from the last financial year, on, uh, on energy, um, the department initiated a number of procurement programs specifically uh, bit window uh, one, bit window four, bit window five, apologies, and um, bit window six of the renewable energy program, as well as um, the battery storage program. In total, um, the department uh, in the last financial year issued uh, tenders uh, with capacity to 4,700 megawatts, um, and uh, which brings the total procurement initiatives uh, under the RP. 2019 uh, to 9,313 megawatts. And the department um, has also removed the threshold for embedded generation, which therefore makes it easy for uh, generation uh, for own use or uh, bilateral contracts uh, uh, to be registered uh, instead of being, being licensed. We have um, amended the Electricity Regulation Act, um, which will enable an independent transmission company uh, 
to be uh, established uh, by by ESCOM. The bill has has uh, amendment bill has since been uh, submitted uh, to Parliament for uh, consideration. With regard to um, uh, grid uh, electrification or access, we have uh, in the last financial year connected over 145,000 additional households uh, through grid electrification and around 20,000 uh, households through non-grid technologies. We have also finalized the development of electrification master plans for six provinces, which is Gauteng, Pumalanga, Limpopo, Northwest, KZN, and Eastern Cape, uh, with the remaining three provinces, which is the three state, Northern Cape, and Western Cape, planned for finalization during this current financial year. On mining, we um, are working with CETA um, uh, on the mining licensing system, and um, the department uh, with CETA has issued a request for bids or a tender uh, to acquire uh, the money licensing system, which will ensure that we have a system that uh, is efficient and uh, always uh, accessible as well as uh, transparent. We released the uh, exploration strategy to the public uh, in the last financial year, and the department together with the IDC um, um, are finalizing uh, the establishment of the of the uh, exploration support fund uh, for emerging miners. We have also in the last financial year uh, reduced the backlog um, on licensing uh, by about forty percent. Um, and um, with regard to safety, um, the last financial year saw the lowest fatalities on record uh, with zero fatalities um, for the month of January twenty twenty three. Next slide. Um, on state owned entities, um, we, the department uh, working with SEF, um, uh, we have uh, finalized the business case and proposal for the incorporation of the Central Energy Fund group of companies, interesting of South African uh, National Petroleum uh, Company. Um, the business case and uh, and the decision to move forward and, and form the SANPC uh, were finalized and approved by cabinet in the last financial year. And this in this financial year, uh, the SEF group will focus on implementing um, the decision of cabinet. Next slide. With regard to key priorities for this financial year, these are the priorities that I indicated that the minister has committed to with the president. And, on energy, there are four key priorities, uh, with the first one being um, the procurement of a new generation capacity, um, with the details as included there, that uh, we intend to finalize or reissue, uh, depending on, on, on the final outcome of the emergency procurement. Um, um, we will finalize um, the emergency procurement that we had started and also look at issuing uh, additional um, uh, procurement bids in this in this regard. We will also issue bid window seven and bid window eight of renewable energy uh, program, uh, which is going to be up in total 10,000 megawatts, which is 5,000 megawatts per, per bid window in line with the IRP 2019. Um, the department under the procurement of new generation capacity will also issue the uh, gas to power uh, uh, request for proposals. Um, uh, for Kuha and other areas in the in the country, the department has also uh, issued a determination, which NASA has now conquered to for another three thousand megawatts uh, at Richards Bay, and um, uh, to be developed um, around the Richards Bay area. The department will also, in this current financial year, finalize the request for proposal for the nuclear bill program for about two thousand five hundred megawatts. We will. Leave progress the work on the field gas program, which is basically uh, the commitment that we will work towards the lifting of the moratorium on shale gas in this current financial year. We will update the finalize the update of the integrated resource plan to ensure that there is uh, an updated plan uh, that will drive investment uh, in the in the electricity sector. And as I've already indicated earlier, we will uh, implement. Um, the South African um, National Petroleum Company and the turnaround of uh, Petrisay. 
on mining, uh, there are five um, commitments uh, or key priorities that have been made. Um, the first one being the implementation of the mining licensing system that I had already indicated that um, we have gone out to procure. We will. We had committed or uh, prioritized um, dealing with with the backlog, uh, and the commitment here is that we aim to wipe out the licensing backlog um, that we currently have uh, in the in the department. Um, we intend to implement uh, the exploration support fund uh, for emerging miners. We will develop and uh, roll out a strategy for critical minerals. Uh, for South Africa. We will also roll out uh, the uh, small scale, artisanal and small scale mining support program that we've always had uh, in, the, in, the, in the department of which we have now finalized all the processes that will allow us to be able to assist uh, small scale and artisanal miners. Uh, next slide, we will now move to chapters and two. Uh, the highlight of um, some of the targets that, that we have, and we've grouped them uh, first. Um, these are what we call the governance or compliance um, uh, uh, targets. Uh, in the main, um, we will focus on implementing the following, the reduction on wasteful and, and fruitless expenditure, and the reduction on irregular expenditure. And we aim to uh, uh, have an unqualified audit um, uh, for, for this current financial year, while our ultimate aim is to have a clean audit um, with some of the limitations that we know we have in the department that we must give a call. We, our target for this year is to have an unqualified uh, audit opinion. Um, we aim to resolve all um, the uh, in, uh, issues uh, that have been reported with regard to um, incidents or, or occurrences of, of corruption. Um, we will endeavor to ensure that all the uh, shareholder compact and complete plans uh, uh, and annual plans uh, for SOEs are approved and tabled accordingly. Um, we will also uh, ensure that uh, all annual reports are tabled in parliament uh, on time. On policy and regulation, um, to ensure an integrated uh, uh, minerals and energy policy that uh, uh, promote transformation and investment um, and sustainable development in the sector. The following uh, targets um, are uh, included in our plan for this financial year. We aim to update uh, the following bills, the Petroleum Product Bill, the Mine, and Health, Mine Health and Safety Bill, the, uh, we aim to develop the South African National uh, Petroleum Company Bill. We will amend the Diamond uh, Bill uh, Act uh, and, and therefore um, yes, submit to Cabinet the Diamond Amendments Bill. Um, we will uh, submit to Cabinet for tabling in Parliament the Radioactive uh, Waste Management Fund Bill. We will um, Gazette, the Radioactive Waste Management uh, Disposal Institute Act regulations will reintroduce the case amendment bill for approval uh, by cabinet for tabling in parliament. We will also, um, as part of the work that we'll do under policy and regulation, update the integrated uh, resource plan and submit it uh, to cabinet for promulgation. On energy security, I have already uh, spoken to some of these um, under the priorities. Um, it is to, in the main, um, our work will entail uh, the procurement of new generation capacity. And here we will issue a number of requests for proposals for uh, storage, for renewable energy, for gas to power, for nuclear, and we'll also continue to monitor uh, the Quebec nuclear power plant long-term operation program, which is the extension of the life of, of Quebec. On electrification or uh, energy access, we uh, committing to um, electrify additional 15,000 households through the non-grid technology. And the non-grid technologies uh, for the benefit of those that may not be aware, this is where we uh, electrify uh, households that uh, are not uh, close to the grid or where the grid will take a while to, to get to these households. And we therefore use um, 
uh, solar panels and, 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 and batteries to electrify these this households. Um, and here we intend to electrify about uh, additional 15,000 in this current financial year. We will um, also continue to oversee the implementation of the Great Electrification Program. And the target for this financial year is to ensure that the additional 220,000 households are electrified by ESCOM and um, other contracted uh, municipalities. As I'd already indicated in my introduction, um, we will also uh, complete um, the development of electrification master plans for the remaining provinces, which is the Western Cape Northwest and the Free State. We will also continue uh, to finalize the gateway review of the facility study of the central interim storage one uh, facility uh, and ensure that the uh, final feasibility report is submitted to cabinet for approval. On compliance and inspections, we will continue to uh, undertake um, inspections on SLPs, uh, ensure legal uh, uh, compliance inspections are also undertaken. Um, uh, we will also do inspections on mining economics, uh, environment, uh, retail sites, and uh, fuel sampling. We will also um, continue to monitor um, um, on the, the, the nuclear after program uh, in terms of the commitments that we've made um, in, that, in, that, in, that, in that regard. We also endeavor to ensure that uh, we comply with uh, all the nuclear inspection reports. Uh, that needs to be, to be submitted. We will also continue to uh, implement the program of uh, rehabilitation and um, uh, of derelict and ownerless mines uh, in line with um, the budget the department uh, uh, has been given. In this regard, we have committed to rehabilitate uh, three sites and still uh, 40 shops in this uh, current financial year. On, on mine, and, mine health and safety, uh, and in pursuit for the goal of zero harm, we will continue to uh, push for the reduction of occupational facilities, occupational fatalities, occupational injuries, uh, occupational diseases. We will uh, continue to in, uh, ensure that we complete all the investigations um, that um, uh, entails um, health and safety um, in the in the in the sector. Next slide. On empowerment, um, uh, which is uh, there to ensure transformation within the sector, um, we'll ensure that we we'll continue to ensure that um, uh, uh, we commit to ensure that the rights are issued um, to historically disadvantaged uh, South Africans. Um, uh, once again, we'll ensure that uh, a number of SLPs uh, are completed uh, in support of the communities around the mining uh, uh, areas. Um, we commit to enable, uh, through the issuing of mining rights and petroleum licenses, uh, 8,000 um, additional jobs. Um, we commit to approve uh, invoices um, within 30 days uh, in support of specifically of small and medium. Uh, enterprises, and um, we will continue to ensure that 80% of the financial procurement uh, goes to qualifying uh, women, youth, and uh, disabled. Um, we will complete the renewable energy sector master plan, which is the localization master plan, to ensure that um, uh, we drive uh, localization of uh, uh, equipment and, 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 and technology. Um, we will, as uh, I've already indicated, continue to uh, support uh, small scale miners, uh, specifically women, uh, small scale miners. Um, and during this current financial year as well, um, we uh, intend to approve and launch uh, a number of uh, strategies, uh, which, uh, which is the draft mining sector youth strategy uh, and its implementation, the youth in energy strategy and its implementation. And then um, the mining sector, women empowerment, gender, and equity strategy. We will also continue to monitor and report on implementation of energy sector empowerment and gender equity strategy uh, as per the gender framework that we have developed. Chairperson, uh, with your permission, I will add this station over to the CFO to present the details on the budget allocation.
Thank you, DG. Uh, good morning, Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Deputy Minister, DG and colleagues. I'll present the 2023 medium term expenditure framework. Uh, and the slide that's in, on the screen at the moment is a summary per program. Chairperson and members, over the MTF period, we have 33.6 billion. The MTF period covers 23, 24 financial year, 24, 25, 25, 26. Cumulatively over those three financial years, we have 33.6 billion. Under administration, uh, we have the ministry, the DG's office, corporate services, finance, internal audit, risk and strategy. And for the MTF period, we have 2 billion to be spent over the MTF period. Minerals and petroleum regulation as 1.6 billion. Mine health and safety inspectorate. Sorry, sorry. It's mining minerals and energy policy development, 3.5 billion. Mine health and safety inspectorate, 733 million. Minerals and energy resources programs and projects, 22 billion, uh, which takes the lion's share of the budget, uh, which is consistent with prior years as well. Nuclear energy regulation management, 3.6 billion. Between 23 financial year and 24, 23-24 financial year, there has been a small increase of 254 million. That's column two and column three. If you compare those two columns, it's increased by 254 million, which is 2.3%. And the biggest increase goes to uh, programs and projects and then uh, energy policy and development. Between 23 and 24 and 24 and 25, in those two financial years, it goes up by 532 million. And they're comparing the last two financial years, that's 24, 25 and 25, 26, the budget increases by 502 million. On average, over the MTF period, our budget increases by 4%. Next slide, please. Chairperson and members, the same information that I just presented is now presented in a graph. Uh, if you see programs and projects, that's the blue portion of the graph. It takes 65.6% .6 of the budget, which is also consistent with prior years. And it is followed by nuclear regulation of 10.9% and then the policy branch by 10.2%. I'll move from the slide. The next slide as MTF allocations that the budget share by economic classification. So for the 23, 24 financial year, 24, 25, 25, 26, it's the same MTF period, but this time the budget has been allocated by compensation of employees, goods and services, transfers and subsidies and capital assets. For the 23, 24 financial year and the, the outer two years, for 23, 24, the budget has been confirmed. For 24, 25 and 25, 26 financial years, the budgets are indicative figures, which is confirmed in the later, the latter part of the year. If you look at the compensation of employees, there's marginal increase over the MTF period, and the department is undergoing the restructuring process. When that budget program structure has been finalized, we would approach Treasury on a special uh, meeting to agree on that budget. Goods and services, uh, between the last financial year, that's 22-23 to 23-24, the budget decreased by 258 million, and I will provide the reasons. The following year, it goes up by 15 million, and the outer year, by up by 49 million. Transfers and subsidies in the 23-24 financial year, it increased by 510 million. 24-25 also increased by 502 million. 25-26 increased by 400 million. And I will also provide the details of where these increases have been allocated. Payment for capital assets, the only uh, year that I would like to bring to your attention is 24-25. There's a big jump 
from 23-24 financial year to 24-25. And the reason for that, the budgets used to be decentralized. In the 24-25 financial year, we have now centralized the budget from all different programs, hence the big jump. And over the MTF period, as I've indicated, we've increased by 4%. Next slide, please. Chairperson and members, uh, these are some of the reasons for the changes in the budget allocation. Compensation of em employees accounts for about 3.3 billion over the MTF period. However, the increase year on year is marginal. So there is no room for uh, expansion. If we have to go to Treasury for the restructuring, it's got to be on a specific basis for uh, the additional headcount that we would require. Goods and services, this uh, allocation caters for all operational costs within the department. Um, the, uh, the decrease commences with the reduction that's from 22-23 to 22-23 to 23, 24, the budget decreased. And the main reason for the decrease is because once of allocations have been removed. And these once of allocations were the IPP office, which received 114 million in the 22, sorry, in the 22, 23 financial year. So in the 23, 24 year, that funding is no longer available. ICT, the enterprise system, and their electrification master plan, those fundings have now been removed as well. They were once off. Funds for the expanded public work incentives, just the incentive portion, has moved from the Department of DMRE to other national departments. So that change is also effected in the 23-24 financial year. Still staying within the goods and services allocation, we have all operating leases, that's for our head office, our regional offices, ICT system, shale gas uh, project, which is undertaken by PASA, uh, costs related to inspections, including the petroleum retail sites under the regulation program, rehabilitation of derelict and ownerless mines being implemented by Mintec and CGS. It also includes the solar water heating program, the non-grid program, where all the verification also takes place under this program, those costs are reside under goods and services. And then it's also conducting the mandatory mine inspections for the enforcement of compliance. Next slide, please. Under transfers and subsidies, from the 22-23 financial year to 23-24, the budget increased by 6.4%, mainly uh, due to earmarked funds for the Council for Geoscience. Uh, it's for activities for onshore and offshore map coverage. Um, it's also had some increases to the municipality and ESCO. And the lastly, capital assets, which went up slightly. Next slide, please. Under the transfer payment, uh, I've also have on the next slide, the a specific slide showing all transfers to our entities and to implementing agents. Just these are some of the comments before I get to that schedule. Of the 26.96 billion earmarked for transfers over the medium term, that's 23, 24 financial year to 25, 26 covering the three year period, a total of 18.92 billion will go towards the implementation of the National Electrification Program both under INAP municipalities and INAP ESCOM grants. 7.07 .07 billion will be received by the DMRE entities. NEXA will receive 3.07 billion, followed by Council for Geoscience and then Mintec. International membership fees uh, over the 2023 20, medium term is anticipated at 11, 116.52 million with IE, IAEA receiving a large share of this amount. The remaining transfers and subsidy budget will go to the IDC for small scale mining and marginal mines for water management solutions. Next slide, please. Chairperson and members, this is a rather busy slide, but it covers the transfers that we make to all our entities and implementing agents. 
Under administration, we have our CETAS, uh, the Mining Qualification Authority and the households. Households covers uh, when people do retire, uh, the leave payouts and gratuities get paid out from this line item. Under minerals and petroleum regulation, we do have money transferred to the South African Diamond and Precious Metals Regulator, and this is for operational funding. In the 23-24 financial year, they get 63.1 million. PASA, that's a petroleum agency of South Africa, gets funding for operational reasons, and they get 92 million in the 23-24 financial year. Then there's membership fees to APO with 3.3 million. Policy development, Mintech gets operational funding of 288 million plus CapEx, which is about 30 million. And for the financial year, you can see a slight decrease between 22, 23 financial year to 23, 24. And it's due to the DPIW, the incentive portion that was taken away from the department and reallocated to another national department. Council for Geoscience gets money for operational reasons and they get 559 million. And there's also membership fees of 4.6 million. Mine Health and Safety Inspectorate gets, that the council gets money for operational reasons and they get 4.7 million. Programs and projects, which is the biggest uh, uh, amount of transfers handled by this program. INEP municipalities, these are where municipalities are licensed for grid connections. They get 2.2 billion, and I will provide the breakdown for that. INAP ESCOM, 3.8 billion, and I will also provide the breakdown of that 3.8 billion. Energy efficiency and demand side management, it's 224 million. Sanedi gets money for operationals, for operation reasons, 81 million. The IDC, this is for small scale mining, 27 million. Water management subsidies to marginal mines, 6.8 million. And then this membership fees of 3.2 million. Lastly, the nuclear program. The South African Nuclear Energy Corporation, that's NEXA, gets 991 million in this current financial year. Breaking that 991 million down, they get money for the decommissioning and decontamination of the old strategic nuclear facilities. They get 188 million for stage one. The preparation work for the new multi-purpose reactor project, which is about 20 million. Decommissioning and decontamination of all strategic nuclear facilities, but that is stage two, they get 23 million, making up the 991 million. Nuclear, National Nuclear Regulator gets money for operations and they get 46 million. The Enradi, that's a National Radioactive Waste Disposal Institute, 50 million. And then there's membership fees under nuclear for 25.9 million. It's giving us a total for 23, 24 financial year of 8.5 billion. And 24, 25 of 9 billion, 25, 26 of 9.4 billion. Over the MTF period, 26.9 billion. The graph in front of you just shows you the average share over the MTF period. It's exactly as I presented of all the figures from the previous slide. You can see on the slide, INAP municipalities get 25.9% of our budget over the MTF period under transfers and taking the biggest share is 44.5% going to ESCOM INAP program. And it's, I won't repeat anything else on the slide. Can we move to the next slide, please? Chairperson and members, for the figures that I've presented for the municipal program and ESCOM program, for the 23-24 financial year, that's this financial year, which commenced on 1 April, 2023, for the municipal program, we have 2.2 billion and ESCOM 3.8 billion. Eastern Cape, just for the municipal program, they will get 287 million. Free State, 143 million. Houteng, 158 million. KZN, 540 million. Limpopo, 344 million. Impumalanga, 255 million. Northern Cape, 149 million. Northwest, 96 million. 
Western Cape, 236 million. The ESCOM program allocation, that is a 3.8 billion that we have for this financial year. It's allocated to the Eastern Cape of 924 million, Free State 100 million, Gauteng 137 million, KZN 902 million, Limpopo 503 million, Impumalanga 325 million, Northern Cape 241 million, Northwest 571 million, Western Cape 114 million, giving us a total of 3.8 billion. There are other allocations to the energy efficiency and demand side management, solar water heating program, the rehabilitation of mines and water ingress projects, but a breakdown of that is available should the committee require that we would provide it. Next slide, please. Chairperson and members, this for the targets that the DG uh, mentioned earlier on, for the 23-24 financial year, that's this current financial year, this is the funding the department has for its compensation of employees for goods and services, transfers, capital assets, including the headcount per program to achieve the targets that were mentioned. Under administration, they have 549 headcount, which does look a bit high, but considering that we have the ministry, the DG, the DG's office, and other components included in the administration. And for the financial year, they have 695 million. Minerals and petroleum regulation, they have 440 in terms of headcount and 511 million to achieve their targets. Mining, minerals, and energy policy development, 133 headcount and 1 billion in terms of budget. Mine health and safety inspected, 263 headcount and 233 million for budget. Programs and projects, 126 headcount and has 7 billion in terms of the budget. But to bear in mind, much of that budget goes to transfers. However, the oversight function for these transfers are conducted by the department and it is also very resource intensive. And it is um, the budget for that is also covered under this program. Nuclear energy regulation and management, 39 in terms of ed count and 1.1 billion in terms of the budget. But the biggest part of that budget, which was 991 million, goes to NEXA. Next slide, please. Chair and members, it's the very same information that I presented previously on the previous slide. It's just showing you that this for this financial year, transfers and subsidies still takes the biggest part of our budget. And for that, as I mentioned, all the oversight functions are carried out by the department. It's followed by goods and services and then compensation of employees. Under goods and services, it covers all our operational costs. And in this financial year, we, we have planned for the ICT enterprise system, which was mentioned for the mining licensing system, the rehabilitation of mines, shale gas project, non-grid, solar water heating, and monitoring and evaluation of our many electrification programs. Next slide, please. Chairperson and members, I have covered all these comments already whilst I was presenting the figures, so I won't repeat any of these comments because I've already mentioned it. With that, I want to say thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, DG. Thank you, CFO. Um, Honorable Chairperson, that's the end of the presentation. Uh, Honorable Deputy Minister, I hand back to you. Um, thank you so much, ADG, and thank you so much, uh, members of the select committee for actually listening to our presentation. This then takes us to the end of uh, the presentation. I'm handing over the meeting to you, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, GM and DG, CFO, uh, members. Um, I put in front of you the presentation from the department. Um, after welcoming the presentation, now it's your time to ask questions. I'll see with your hand up or those who doesn't uh, able to raise their hand, they can just tell me 
uh, they want to ask questions. For now, I can see only two hands. I don't know whether others um, they will come. Okay. Uh, Honorable baby. Mom, baby, mama. Hello, mama. The Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, greetings uh, to the DM officials and also my colleagues. I've got two questions, Chairperson, here. Uh, the first one is, um, Chairperson, my first question is on slide four, uh, on bullet five. Uh, you mentioned that uh, there are plans to improve uh, the performance of existing uh, power stations and the additions of uh, generation capacity. Now, can you shed, shed the light on, on those plans by providing a detailed response on what does those plans entail? And um, are the plans driven by timeframes or timelines? And if yes, what are the timelines? And uh, are there any challenges, uh, Chairperson, in implementing the plans uh, to improve uh, performance of existing um, power stations? And if yes, uh, Chairperson, what are the challenges? That is my first question, Chairperson. And my second question, Chairperson, is uh, on program five. Uh, mineral and energy resources and projects. Um, uh, for last year, you mentioned that uh, there were more than 200 municipalities that are participating in the energy efficiency. And demand site management grant programs. Is the figure still the same chairperson as the last year? And how had the municipalities that participated performed? Are they uh, being uh, monitored, Chairperson? Can I get a detailed answer on that aspect? Thank you very much, Chairperson. Those were my two questions. Thank you very much, Mama. Thanks, Let Mama. Uh, Honorable Nana, with your brown hand or African hand. Uh, good morning, good morning, Chairperson, and good morning to honorable members. Uh, Chairperson, I, I was the second one. Oh, oh Mama, uh, Papa Chocolate. Uh, honorable Nana, you will come, Mama. You will come, Mama. Don't worry, Mama. No, no, she can, she can, go, she can go ahead, Chairperson. I'll, I'll hold back. Okay, no problem, Mama. Thanks, Papa. Your rata chocolate too much. That's why I'm so bony. This so cold. Lily brown. I get. I get lily brown. Thanks, Honorable Nana, uh, for giving me this opportunity. I'm afraid there's a load shedding here, and also thank you, Chair, for giving me this opportunity to ask the questions. I also like to thank the department for the presentation. Chairperson, I wanted to, uh, uh, under the program of five minerals and the energy resource, we have heard that the department had launched a program called Women Diggers. Now, Chair, I want to check which aim at building the capacity of women among the identified women digests, and also how much funding has been set aside to this year to support women to get 
mining permit. And also, Chair, I want to check that does the department have any plans to launch this program to all provinces? If yes, what are the plans? And if no, why not? My second question, Chair, is on women presentation in the department particular in senior management position. I want to check that does the department have enough woman representation? And if not, why are, why are the, what are the delay to achieve gender patriarchy in the department? Chair, on the presentation with, with a disability, I want to check what is the percent of employed persons with disability in the department. And have you reached the, the national target? If no, what are your plans to reach the target or, 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 or of threshold. The third question chair is on the state of the board of the entities of the department. I want to check how many board have permit, permit and temporary members and how many whose terms will end this year. Lastly, Chair, on the mining right application, I want to check how many mining rights application and where finalized and how many were educated. I thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Mama. Let me give to Honorable Nana, Papa Chocolate. Mm -hmm. How we can Thanks, eat uh, chocolate. <laughs> Thanks, Jefferson, for, for, for the opportunity. Uh, my, mine is, is, is really short. Uh, Jefferson, I, I would like to know from, from the department when, when the CFO presented numbers, she actually mentioned that I think it was three uh, once of disbursements that were made and they have now since been discontinued. And one of those is a disbursement that was made to, to the IPP office. And I, suppose, I guess she also mentioned two more others. Now, now my question is, uh, with the discontinuation of those disbursements, what impact will that have in the smooth operations, in the, in the seamless functioning of, of those offices? Secondly, on the, on the matter of the extension of uh, who begs lifespan. What environmental implications does that have? Does the department have a, a nuclear waste management plan, uh, given the fact that Quebec is expected to, to go for another for another 20 years or so. And thirdly, Chaperson, it's a matter that, that, that bothers residents in the, in the western part of, of the Eastern Cape, is the manganese mining that is, that is happening in the Northern Cape. Uh, 
and and uh, on on this matter, I am speaking completely out of out of uh, ignorance, and I would want to solicit a a a, a comment from from the department. You have trucks that are running from from the Northern Cape coming to deliver manganese at at at, at Port Elizabeth uh, at Port Elizabeth. Uh, harbor. Those trucks are running amok. I have raised this issue before, and I would want to raise it again. The amount of accidents that are caused by those trucks, the amount of fatalities that are caused by those trucks on the road between between Northern Cape and Port Elizabeth. And in Port Elizabeth, uh, after all, as, as colleagues will recall, I mentioned this before, I also lost a friend owing to those trucks that are low unto themselves. Uh, what has the department given it a thought? Because it will get to a stage and, and I suppose it will be now out of control. It will get to a stage where communities will take matters uh, to their own hands with regards to those trucks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Nana. I think those, oh, Honorable Laboskakne. Honorable Laboskakne. Morning, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Chair, I just want to ask two questions. Uh, and um, in looking at the legislative framework of the department and referring to an oversight visit that we went to the Jagersfontein disaster in last year, September 22, I want to ask the department, uh, following the Free State High Court judgment in 2007, stating that the MPRDA does not regulate tailing dumps and the reworking of these dumps, uh, did the department, the department did not appeal that adjustment and has not submitted any amendment bill to address the legal shortcomings up till now. Can the department tell us why this is? And then also, if as the depa department uh, asserted during the Jagersfontein fact-finding mission, the High Court judgment only applies to the free state, can the department provide details of the extent of its regulations of tailings recovering activity in the rest of the country? The reason why I put these questions here, this is in the annual, this is, you know, the budget and the annual plan, and we know about climate change and severe weather conditions. I think these questions is in line for, you know, what will happen in if the legislative framework stays as it is and more disasters follows. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Loves uh, Let me check, no, those are the only hands that they wanted to ask uh, questions. I'll give back to you, GM and GG. DM. Dr. Deputy Minister. No, thank, you. thank you so much, a uh, um, select committee. Uh, sorry, 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 DM. Honorable Laboskarni, can you mute your mic, please? Continue, Dr. Ngabane. Yes. Um, Chair, maybe one is going to take your questions and take over um, more technical questions to um, to um, um, uh, the DG and CFO as well as um, relevant DDGs maybe to respond to those questions. 
Um, in terms of the first question that has been raised by Honorable Bibi, um, Chair, with regards to um, the master plan, which is slide, um, I think slide, slide four that speaks about uh, the fi to finalize the development of the electrification master plan for six provinces, which is GPMP, Lipopo, and Eastern Cape. And the remaining provinces land to be finalized during this current financial year. I think what we need to understand is that we are going to detail them, but what we need to say is that there has been some um, uh, reconfiguration in terms of uh, the administration, but there is no way we can divert from what the president uh, pronounced uh, on the 25th of July, 2022, um, where he indicated that uh, amongst the plans that um, we are going to actually employ um, will be those plans that we come up with working together with the National Energy Crisis Committee. Um, and he highlighted five key interventions of which is to fix ESCOM, to enable and accelerate private investment in generation capacity and to accelerate procurement of new capacity to unless business and households to invest in rooftop uh, solar and fundamentally to transform the electricity sector to achieve long-term energy security. I'm not going to be specific to say when are these plans going to be ready and what are the details of them, but obviously they are going to be informed by these five key interventions as pronounced by the president on the 25th of July, 2022. The question of uh, maybe the participation of other municipalities of which 200 were identified, if we're going to expand and include more um, municipalities, the DG is going to touch on that one. Um, the question raised by Honorable Nguenya around the Women Diggers program that we launched in the province of the Northwest um, indeed, as the department, we are making strides in transforming the sector and to ensure that there is women inclusion in the entire value chain of the mining and energy space. Um, amongst the interventions in particular, the key one, because we need to be informed by our plans and, 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 and strategies that we put in place in trying to address the problem, um, we have developed the Women Empowerment and Gender Equality Strategy in 2021, and it was launched again where the Ministerial Advisory Council was um, a, a introduced to the audience that was there. Basically, what we are doing is to make sure that women are part of the entire value chain and we regulate, we transform and promote the minerals and energy sectors, providing sustainable and affordable energy for growth and development and ensuring that all South Africans derive sustainable benefit from the country's world with women, young people, and people with disabilities included in our interventions. And the part which asks if, um, how much set aside for women diggers. There is no specific uh, budget that is um, focusing on women, but we do have a program or a budget that is set aside for exploration. And we also do have a budget that is set aside for small scale mining of which we also make sure that even women they also benefit out of these um, uh, uh, programs. In terms of the representation of women in senior positions, um, recently I remember when we were recruiting the DDG programs and projects, 
in the department. We did check with the minister, with the administration, if we are still in line with the employment equity. And they did indicate that we are in line, we are complying, meaning that all is in order. We take into cognizance of the representation of women in the sector. I'm then going to um, hand over to uh, the DG and the team to respond on Honorable Nana's questions around nuclear waste management plan and the one that has been asked by Honorable Lapus, I don't know how to pronounce my apologies, um, regarding the, 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 the whether we've appealed uh, on the past fountain, um, a dump collapse. Uh, DG and the team, uh, could you please take the remaining questions? Thank you so much, Honorable Members, and the chairperson of the Portfolio Committee. Thank, thank you, Deputy Minister. Um, I'm going to request the colleagues and the fellow colleagues to respond to some of the questions, and then I will take the ones that, that were left. I'm going to request um, Acting DG Jim Bofu to respond to the question on energy efficiency. Uh, how has it performed if we've added new municipalities? And then I'm going to ask uh, Didi Jim Bambo to respond to the question on um, nuclear waste and extension of Quebec. And then um, the CFO will take the one on the funding. And then um, Didi Jim Mchongo can add to um the question on representation in the department um women and uh, people living with disabilities in terms of the numbers and then um it is in Wabe then can, can respond to the question about the um updating of the uh, of the NPRDA um in relation to uh, the judgment on Vegas one date, and then I'll come back and 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 close by responding to the question on the trucks. Uh, over to you, DG uh, both. Thanks, DG. Uh, good uh, good morning to the honourable minister. Good morning to the honourable members of the select committee. Uh, I will deal with the question of uh, two hundred municipalities in the EEDSM. Uh, program. The 200 municipalities, as you see there, honorable member, is a cumulative number of municipalities that have participated in the program since uh, inception. Uh, so in the current in the current municipal fiscal year, which ends in June this year, we've got 45 municipalities that are currently participating uh, in the program. In the year that will begin for municipalities from the 1st of July, there will be 47 municipalities which will be participating in the EEDSM program. With respect to the performance, the 45 municipalities that we currently are dealing with in the, uh, in the current municipal fiscal year, which ends in June, they are performing uh, reasonably well. There are only three municipalities that we have reduced. Uh, they are budgets because of certain performance issues, uh, mainly relating to the procurement uh, aspect. So we have basically take down their budget to be able to not basically uh, terminate the program, but basically to make sure that they first of all uh, comply uh, with what they are supposed to comply with, but also to make sure that the program continues because we derive uh, energy savings from the uh, program. So that is basically where we are with the EDSM program. Ma'am. Did you hear Bambo? And thank you, DG, and uh, thank you, honorable members, for the question. I'm going to deal with the question regarding the COVID uh, long term operations and uh, the issue of the waste management plan. Yes, uh, the COVID is undergoing the long term operations, uh, and ESCOM is, is, is busy with this project, and the department monitors the project 
for the extension of the life of the plant uh, beyond 2024. And uh, in terms of uh, the, the, the waste management for the plant, we do have uh, an overarching uh, radioactive waste management plan for the Quebec that was approved by the minister uh, some few years ago. I think it's about uh, 2018. And uh, also we are aware that uh, Quebec uh, has uh, also applied uh, from to the national uh, nuclear regulator in terms of uh, having the nuclear installation license extended for the plant to continue to operate safely beyond 2024. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did uh, you Flongo? Thank you, DG. Good uh, afternoon, Minister, Deputy Minister, and uh, Honourable Members. Um, from the corporate services perspective, which focuses internally, um, we are sitting at 40% women SMS in employment um, as part of a plan to mitigate on this percentage as male SMS members exit the department, we endeavor to fill the positions with um, women uh, SMS members. I can report to the members that uh, with the recent appointments that we have finalized, depending on the individuals when we make offers, we should be filling these positions um, with uh, women SMS, and that should get us to the national target of 50%. With regard to the people with disability, we are currently sitting at 1.6% um, versus a target of 2%. Also on this one, I may report that um, we are currently finalizing an appointment of a person with disability and should the person accept, um, we will be able to close off on the gap and reach the um, the two percent. Uh, DJ, I may as well respond on the question on the boards. Uh, one member asked if there are any um, terms of boards that are ending. I can report that yes, the term for the board of CGS is coming to an end. Actually, it ended on Sunday, and we have um, already advertised, and we should be appointing members very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Did you know Thank you, Tichi. Morning, honorable chair, honorable members, Mr. Tichi and colleagues. Hello, Chief. Um, on the question around the updating of the MPRDA to ensure that liability relating to tailings waste is covered in the MPRDA. This was one of the issues that we attempted to address with the last amendment to the MPRDA that took long in parliament until they were withdrawn. And so in this current financial year, in our AOP our annual operational plan, we do have the MPRDA and the colleagues have started working on the areas that were proposing to be amended. And this is one uh, aspect that we'll be looking at amending. So when the bill um, goes through to parliament in the next financial year, this matter will uh, definitely be addressed in the, in the proposed amendments. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Uh, CFO. Thank you, DG. Uh, the question by the member on the once-off uh, funding that has been removed in the 23-24 financial year. The IPP office, the 114 million that has been removed in this current financial year of 23-24, it'll have minimal effect, if not none. It was a once-off uh, for operational reasons. In the main, it was to assist with the evaluation of upcoming windows. But also to point out the IPP office does generate some of their own funding, so they would be able to uh, operate 
uh, without uh, any negative impact. The ICT, the funding that was removed, this was funding that was reprioritized internally from DMRE. And we've took out from other programs and tried to assist ICT for the mining licensing system. Unfortunately, due to some challenges with that uh, process, uh, it did not, uh, we didn't use the funding and that funding is no longer available. The impact, however, in this current financial year, there is some funding available for the mining licensing system. And if we do run short, we will reprioritize internally to assist with that system. And lastly, the electrification of the master plan. This funding was pure, was only granted for two financial years. That's 21-22 and 22-23 financial year. So it should not have an impact. It was specifically for that reason only. Thank you, DJ. Thank you, Sefo. Um, Chairperson, I think from my side, there's one last question, which was the question around the, the issue of trucks. I think in, in, in the presentation, we did highlight that um, the issues of rail um, and ports are a constraint that uh, the sector is experiencing. And it, it obviously, um, there are more trucks on the road and not only um, in the mining sector, but overall, the overall economy uh, because of the limitations and the challenges that um, our rail network is, is experiencing. There are discussions um, um, specifically led by DPE and Transnet on, on how to deal with uh, the challenges um, that the rail uh, 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 space is, 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 is facing. And obviously those discussions include possible concessions of the lines uh, to, to operators to ensure that um, we, we open up the capacity and that is there on this, on this, on this, on these lines. Um, with regard to the tracks, which is the current obvious um, uh, uh, solution that um, um, is being, is being, is being utilized to transport the, the commodities. Um, obviously, um, tracking is, is a transportation issue, which obviously uh, falls under um, the Department of, of, of Transport and obviously local authorities. Um, which is an issue of uh, ensuring that law enforcement in terms of um, the rules of the road uh, is, 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 uh, is implemented. From the department, there is no specific uh, plan, but what we do take note of, um, especially because, and as, as, as the honorable member um, indicated, um, it is likely that the communities will at some point uh, react to this, and this will further impact on the transportation of the of the commodities we will as a department um, engage with the with the with, with the mineral council uh, to see how uh, the mines can assist as these transports are transporting their commodities can assist in uh, creating some level of awareness and 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 uh, impressing on obviously um, their contractors to make sure that um, they adhere to to the rules of the of the of the road and that they need to adhere to. Um, Chairperson and uh, DM, those are the responses that um, to the questions that we have noted. If there are any that we've left out, we can come back to uh, if we are elected uh, to that. Back to you, uh, Deputy Minister. Thank you so much, uh, DG and the technical team. Um, uh, uh, Honorable delegates to the select committee. Um, this then takes us to the end of responding to our questions. And we hope you, we have actually responded to all the questions raised by delegates. I'm then uh, bringing back your meeting, uh, Chairperson, thank you. Thank you very much, DM. Um, honorable members, um, did the department Hello. Chairperson, Honorable Abbas Kahni. Oh, yes. Mama, Mama. Uh, Chair, sorry, maybe I've missed the answer on the Jagersfontein and the, the ruling on the on the uh, legislation there. Can they just make, yeah. I'm not sure if that question has been answered or I, I, I was listening intently. I, I'm not sure that, yeah. Sorry, okay. can you just clarify the answer? Okay, Mama. 
Um, I will give uh, the honorable members, if they do have any follow-up question, they can do so. I've seen honorable Nguenya, honorable Nana. Honorable Nguenya, you want to a follow-up? Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and also thank you for the response. Chair, I've got one question that I'm not satisfied uh, in terms of the response. Uh, question number four, on mining right application. Chair, my question was, how many mining rights application were finalized and how many were adjudicated. So can they repeat this question, Chair, and answer this question as I've asked? Thank you. Thanks, sir. Thank you very much. <clears throat> now is the time for Honorable Chocolate, Honorable Papa. Yeah, thanks, Chairperson, uh, for, for the second opportunity. Uh, uh, with regards to, to the nuclear waste management plan, uh, I would want to, to suggest to you, Chairperson, and of course, it remains your prerogative whether it will be done or not, uh, and, but also taking into consideration uh, commercial sensitivities uh, around around any any business. So so my my request, Chairperson, uh, is to you that I would really like like to request you to consider uh, inviting uh, that department to come and share with us that plan specifically. In other words, we set aside time and not glance through uh, this waste management plan because it is very important, Chairperson, if we don't focus on, on things like this, they, they might have a devastating effect in so far as our environment is concerned. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Nana. We will do so because really this is important. Uh, we will call the department in the next uh, month or next uh, 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 yeah, when we are not uh, busy with something to specific to deal with it. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable Laboskakni, are you satisfied? Uh, oh. Honorable uh, Chair, yes, thank you. I've uh, typed in the in the chat box the the question on the MPRDM has been answered, but I'm not clear on the question of the monitoring of the tailings in other tailing dams in other provinces. That's the only thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, DM, TG. Thank I you so much. Um, I'm going to then um, hand over to the DG and the team to uh, respond to, um, I'm not sure whether they do have details today to provide before the select committee on um, how many uh, rights applications um, have been finalized and how many have been adjudicated. But if um, we happen not to have those details as in today, um, I will then um, request the, the chair and the delegates to the select committee to allow us to provide those details in writing. Um, we also welcome um, the request by Honorable Nana, which has been uh, accepted by the chair as well to say we must come and present nuclear waste management plan 
before the select committee so that they are going to get in the details and to see if we are complying with the, um, the environmental issues. Um, the team, as soon as you request the rate, you have to come and present. Uh, DG, um, please tackle the question around um, monitoring of the other provinces tailing dams as well as this one of um, the mining right application, how many finalized, how many adjudicated? Thank you. Honorable TM, uh, before DG, let me add on this question of Honorable Nguenya. Uh, after they adjudicated and finalized and adjudicated, uh, can you tell us how many women have been given uh, the opportunity? How many people living with disability and how many youth? Until you said you are trying to changing. There are many that's the follow-up question. You have to please change that to me. Because there are many honorable, honorable and I'm not sure whether she will be online. Please. Honorable Labuskafni. The disadvantaged uh, families. So you must uh, tell us those categories, how many do you give them? How many women, people living with disability and young people? Thank you very much, DM. Yes, DG, um, could you please respond if we don't, we do have those specifics. Um, okay. the, the amendments that um, the chairs actually um, raised. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Deputy Minister and uh, Honorable Chairperson. Um, Chairperson, um, on the monitoring of the tailings, then, so I'm going to ask uh, uh, Caesar, Deputy Jim Caesar, to come in. But before he comes in, um, I can respond to the one on the money and right applications, um, but without obviously the detailed breakdown. Um, uh, for women, youth, um, those living with uh, disabilities, uh, um, those details we can provide them in writing. But I can report that um, in the last financial year, um, we finalized uh, 56 mining rights, of which 38 were granted and 18 were refused. And on prospecting, we finalized 739 uh, applications of which 407 um, uh, were granted and uh, 332 um, were, were refused. Um, the other details, uh, as asked by the chairperson, will provide them in writing as I don't have them um, in hand. Um, see that if you can um, comment on the um, monitoring of the tailing terms that we do in other provinces. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, DG. Uh, good morning to Honorable Chairperson, Honorable Members, uh, Honorable, Honorable uh, DM, and the colleagues. Yes, indeed, uh, DG, to respond to that question. Uh, as a department, we came up with a guideline for uh, mine, mine residue deposits. In other words, the, 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 the dumps that have been referred uh, uh, to, which are not affected by the court's judgment. And uh, we were, uh, for the mining sector, to come up with what we call a, a code of practice. Code of practice is basically a, a, a strategy on how they are going to uh, minimize the impact because of that uh, of those respective terms. Now, we, we expect them to, to implement that strategy, but what, what we do further than that, we monitor uh, the implementation of the, the guideline, including the code of practice itself through conducting inspections and, and audits through the respective minds. Thank you, TJ. Thank you, Om Caesar. Um, Deputy Minister, those are the responses from our side. Thank you. 
thank you so much, Shay. I We believe this time around we have managed to uh, respond to all your questions and follow-up questions. This then brings us to the end of uh, responding to the questions raised. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, DM. Kepesi. Yes, Honorable uh, Mama. Thank you, Chair. I think, Chair, Nsambu English lona umeba mkulu umigase or agezwagalanga gase. My question was based on, Chair, how many bangaki? But I didn't get Uguti A. Babili no mabatatu. Abatole ama rights application. Mining rights application. So, Chair, as the deputy um, uh, the deputy minister said, the question that we are not a uh, the, the question that we, we, we they didn't uh, re reply must come on writing. I think my question is falling under those questions, Chair, because I'm not yet uh, getting the response. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mama. Do the DG answer the question, but uh, DG, you can still uh, uh, answer with uh, in writing the, those numbers that you have uh, mentioned. Uh, this financial, I mean, finite the previous financial year and other years. You can mention. Uh, you can put it in writing. Uh, uh, honorable members, oh, honorable uh, Nana. Chair, I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry for pulling you back. Chair. It's 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 not a question, but uh, mm -hmm. I, I I'm just worried we 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 may we may miss a very important undertaking made by the DG in his response to the trucks that 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 are transporting manganese. He 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 made an undertaking that. Uh, they will meet with the mineral mineral council and and and, and engage. Uh, I would want us to to note each person as an undertaking uh, and uh, in due course, uh, I'm sure I'm sure the DG and the department will be in a position to come back and report to to the select committee on progress made in this regard. I just wanted. To, to flag that Jefferson, we, 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 mustn't, we mustn't lose the importance of, of that undertaking. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable uh, Nana. Uh, let me thank you, Honorable Deputy Minister. Uh, when we opened this meeting, the minister was in the meeting uh, with the gadget called Karabo Mahahani. Uh, I don't know whether he's back now. No, he's not. He's uh, here. He's here as uh, He's here. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Now I will give the Honorable Minister the opportunity to wrap up. Uh, the presentation and we thank you DG, thank you uh, Deputy Minister for presenting to us in detail uh, from your department. Honorable uh, Minister Ndate Kwede Mantashi Karabo Mahakani So I'm told he still has some technical glitches. Um, uh, the network is is a bit bad where he is, uh, but okay. um, he said he's going to try and get another spot um, so that he's going to be able to uh, attend the next session where he will be responding orally uh, to, to the NCOP questions. Um, okay. And and the delegates, we uh, wish to thank you for an opportunity to um, allow us to come and present before the 
the select committee, um, our APP and budget vote uh, presentation. And we also welcome all the questions that you have raised because they assisted us in trying to empower ourselves and to enrich our presentations moving forward when we come into the portfolio committee. And we also recommit and reaffirm that indeed the question, the, the reports that you said we, you want us to come and present in the near future, we are going to start uh, preparations for that so that anytime when you call us to come and present it before the committee, we are ready. Um, uh, the breakdown of um, the application rights and how many adjudicated uh, uh, in different categories or cohorts like youth, women and people with disabilities will be uh, provided uh, within uh, three days in writing so that um, we are all at the same level of understanding and to ensure that uh, the members or the delegate and Honorable Nguenya is satisfied with our, our response. That will be provided within three days to the Secretariat and the Chairperson. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, DM. And if possible, uh, can you tell us uh, where are they coming from? Which provinces they are coming from, those people? Uh, oh. Thank you. Honorable members and D DM, uh, thank you so much. And my, my last comment in this department, Honorable DM and DG, you are the one who regulate the price of the energy, petrol. Please, man, consider the poorest of the poor when you regulate that uh, 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 price in future because the poorest of the poor are uh, outside there, they are crying. That's my comment, it's not a question. I'm just just uh, putting in front of you so that in future, you must be uh, taking into consideration those poorest of the poor. The MND department, thank you very much for coming and we thank you even next time when we call you, do the same thing that you did today with your minister. Thank you very much, you are released. Honorable members must remain in the platform so that we can consider the next item. Thanks, Shetra. Thanks, my DM. While they are getting out of the meeting, uh, Secretariat, can you put the minutes of the joint meeting? Because last time we didn't um, have a time to adopt those minutes due to time constraint. And again, also there was the challenge of the network. Honorable Nana, uh, this hand, is it a legacy hand or is it a new hand? Sorry, Chair, it's an old hand. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, honorable members, I put in front of you the minutes of the 14th March before, ah, is it? Oh, three set of the minutes, oh, okay, go, cool. okay. The 14th March, which was, which was uh, the briefing by the Department of Forestry and Fishery and Environment on the National Felt and Forestry uh, Fire Amendment Bill. I hope honorable members, did you receive these minutes on time? 
Yes, Chairperson, we did. Okay. I put in front of you for adoption. BP move for the adoption of those minutes, um, Chairperson. Okay. I second. Thank Honorable Labuskaknek, second. Thank you very much, Bo Mama. Can you put the next set of the minutes? I hope it's a joint meeting, if I'm not mistaken. For the other, another set of minutes. Eight, uh, the minutes for 18 April, it was the briefing by the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development uh, on the 2023-24 annual performance plan. Uh, I just want to check with honorable members. Do we have any amendments in these uh, minutes? It's page one, yes. Okay, let's go page one. Do we have any amendment or grammar and anything, but the grammar part of it will uh, rectify if there is a problem. Okay. Hmm. I hope honorable members have received the minutes on time and they go through it. And now I put it in front of you for adoption. BP is for the adoption. Honorable BB moves. I'm going to second it. Honorable Mama, I'm going to second it. Yeah, the next uh, set of the minutes. Secretariat. The next uh, set of the minutes. Oh, briefly, the commission on the. Amanda, is it the, the next set of the minutes? Because we are still in the uh, the same the minutes for the joint meeting or oh, briefing briefing on the commission uh, uh, restitution on the rise of the land. Those are yes. the yes, Chair. This is last week's meetings uh, minutes, the twenty fifth. The twenty fifth. Oh, okay. Oh, last week. Uh, okay, okay. Honorable member, I put in front of you the last mi uh, the minutes of the last week meeting. BP moves, Chairperson. Any second? When you second. Second that chair. Okay. Thank you very much, honorable members. Is, do we have any minutes? We have a report, Chair. Sorry. We also have a report to adopt. Oh, the report. The report. Can you put in front of us the reports? Of the committee.
Where is the report? Willelo uh, and Amanda? Is it not showing? No. Chair, please, please note my hand is up for the report. Oh, okay. okay. Honorable uh, Nana, while well, they're still trying to, we didn't, yeah. Yes, Honorable Nana. Okay, Chair. Chair, Chair Basin, if you look at the third line of the first sentence, uh, it's, this report is dated today and yet, the the department presented its APP it last mm. week. Mm. It, it's purely out of ignorance on my part. But when I went through the, the report, I, I just couldn't get my head around a report dated today, whilst in fact the the presentation was done about a week ago. Any reason for that, or is this how it's done? I just wanted to check that, Shane. Thank you. No, it's not how it's done. Uh, I think uh, you have uh, made a mistake, uh, Secretariat. You must put the date for the date when the department uh, presented to us. Thank you very much, Honorable Nana, for for that correction. And then. Any correction in the report, honorable members? Okay, while we wait for members, can I maybe just make a suggestion on Honorable Nana's input on that date? I'm not sure if the date is for the actual date on which the report is considered. If it is not, we will amend. But if it is for the date that the report is considered, it should stay the same. But either way, I will discuss with Asuka and I will give feedback to the committee chair. Thank you. Okay. Or oh, you mean the day when we uh, 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 adopt the, the report? It's supposed to you 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 thought uh, you have to make the the date the, the same date. Yes, Chair. I'll consult just double with, check. Uh, consult with Aska, but normally I don't remember. Uh, he did the report when he do the report. He will do the report on the date when the department I mean, presented. Because when we present there, it will say on this date, the department presented to us, not the date when we adopt. But we can consult with him. Yes, child, Any... I'll do. Okay. Any. Any. Mistake again. If none, uh, I put in front of you, honorable members, the report of the Select Committee on Land Reform, Environment, Mineral, and Energy for adoption. The adoption of a report, members? PP moves for the adoption of the report. Any second? Any second uh, with the amendment? Any second? Uh? Second, a uh, chair with the amendment of the date when the report was presented. Thank you. Thank you very much, honorable member, uh, mamas. Uh, anything uh, left behind, uh, secretariat? 
We have adopted two, how many said two sets of the minutes and the report. So it means we don't have anything in front of us, honorable member. Let me take this opportunity to thank you. You know, you are from long weekend. And yesterday it was um, a workers day where all of you, you were attending those uh, events, but you decided to come to the meeting irrespective of what. I just want to appreciate your effort and your participate in this committee from time to time. I don't know, Ismabatu, you are in the meeting, but I've never had your, uh, even to greet us today. Uh, <laughs> but thank you very much, all of you, for coming and for always prioritizing this uh, committee to attend. Thank you very much, members. Go and prepare yourself for two o'clock uh, sitting. This meeting is officially adjourned. Thanks, Thank Chairperson. Thank you so much, Chairperson. Bye. Bye, Chair. Bye, Momo.